Hey guys, welcome back, it's Maverick here today with episode 6 of Talk to Opus Destiny. So, last episode we met a few people, a few peeps from the Symphonica, um, and um, they were interesting to say the least. I don't think they are really representative of what the Symphonica actually is though, because, you know, the commander dude, I have a feeling that he's off doing kind of his own thing. He might just turn out to be one of the big antagonists of this series of this season, but we'll have to see about that, right? And then we're also introduced to a few of the mechanics, if you will, in regarding to the music cards, and also uh, giving us very ample hints of how they are going to be proceeding with the mobile game in the future. I think it's pretty obvious it's going to be a gacha game, and you can roll for all the various different music cards and whatnot who haven't bonded with a conductor yet, so... I guess maybe one conductor can have music, multiple music cards. I mean, I would presume so, right? Um, but since this is the anime, I don't think that we'll really see much of that there. Uh, it's pretty much just tacked with uh, Cosette slash Destiny, right? And I think we'll just focus on that part of the story. So uh, with that being said, uh, they are heading on towards, I believe, towards New Orleans, right? So let's see if they actually made it there yet. And if they did, well, I am quite interested to see what they're actually going to do in New Orleans and the music that they, um, that they encountered there. So with that in mind, let's get into it. All right, let's begin in three, two, one, play. Oh, yep, that's New Orleans. So are we actually gonna get some jazz influences this time uh, in the music arts and whatnot? shop <laughs> Hey, it's just growing. <laughs> the burns, the burns. All right. So yeah, so I guess they are in New Orleans now. And you know, all the all the other music arts that we've seen up to now have been heavily classical music inspired, right? You know, obviously Destiny is one. And um, you know, like Valkyrie that we just saw last episode, obviously inspired by the Flight of the Valkyries. So I mean, that is a little bit more contemporary compared to the others, but it's still what we call a classical piece of music, right? So, how exactly are they going to handle New Orleans? Are they actually going to have jazz-inspired themes? Jazz-inspired music arts? I mean, that'd be dope. Don't get me wrong. Dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun. Dun da 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 dun dun. <laughs> Sunrise Rooster. Oh wait, and here I thought that was like an abandoned abandoned city or something like that. So, uh, 
Are you a kid tact? No. <laughs> Bunch of canned goods. Mm. Including you. No, don't stress yourself. Okay, is that is that what's gonna happen this episode? Yep, looks like they're gonna do be doing some errands for this episode. Oh, this is a nice part of town. But where have the young people gone? Yep, looks like they're gonna go around town, fix stuff, run errands, and all that. Oh, don't break it. Don't break it, Destiny. What did I expect? <laughs> Any different. Yep, looks like we're going to go around and do lots of errands. <laughs> looks like she knows. Oh. I guess Tact is having a nightmare right now. Oh. Wait, isn't that the girl that's with the uh the Grand Maestro? Uh Sagan, Sagan, I believe he's called. Oh, I guess we're gonna get to see a speakeasy of some sort, eh? Can I play music down there? No, not quite as... Just like a... Really? Out of everything, it's when the saints go marching in? Meister von Nuremberg. Yeah, I'm like, they're clearly listening to jazz and whatnot.
Ať. Okay, so I guess that's a piece of music that his father conducted. Rhapsody in Blue. I feel like that's a famous jazz piece. I'm not quite sure though. That's my dad! <sighs> Where are the young people, though? Is this really a secret? You know, I was half expecting them to have like secret doors and whatnot, right? Kind of like the speakeasies of the 1920s or 1930s. <laughs> oh, looks like Destiny has learned about the niceties of cats. Right now. <laughs> okay. And she's like, ah, if I can eat, I'm okay. <laughs> oh, there we go. Lemon cake. Okay, so I guess they're off doing their own things right now. <laughs> okay. Nah, she doesn't care. She's just like, I got cake. I'm satisfied. They look nothing. Uh, well, I guess... Okay, okay, now we get to the secret place. There we go. Sounds... I... Yeah. Sounds a little bit out of tune.
piano. Okay, a piano player as well. But damn, like who uses a grand piano in a jazz and you know this kind of and this kind of uh this kind of stage, right? Damn, he's got some he's got some fire to him though. So what is he going to play? Rhapsody in blue? Mm, definitely has yeah, it's a jazzy feel. It's definitely not a classical feel. I don't know if it's Rhapsody in Blue to be honest. I'm not familiar with that piece of music. Okay, they're talking about talk. I don't think so. I'm glad you two can have a conversation. <laughs> Huh, so they aren't going to play a jam session? All right.
<laughs> hey, well, that's his unique ability, I guess. Hmm. I like the way that they animated the hands. That's nice. Similar to cassette. Although I guess everybody, I guess. Ah, uh, that's it? And they're just done with New Orleans? Alright then. <laughs> oh, he's gonna write some music now? Hm. Ah. Maybe he's gonna write his opus. Yeah, this is the guy that saved this save talk, right? And this girl. Rooster. That's his father's nickname. A rooster? Alright. Huh? Well, well, anyways. That's it for this episode, I guess. See you guys after this. Well, alright. A fairly uninventful episode, all things considered. Uh, so I guess that answers to the question on is there going to be any jazz-based music arts, right? Judging from the fact that they're just like in and out directly, I'm guessing not. I'm guessing that indeed all the music arts are more classically inspired, if you will. So, um, yeah, but I'm glad that they actually still made a stop in New Orleans anyways, right? The, the birthplace of jazz and all that. Um, and um, even though we didn't really... Well, actually, no, wait. That, that Rhapsody in Blue was definitely a, uh, a jazz-inspired piece, if, if nothing else. So we got a little bit of that, right? Um, but, you know, honestly, nothing much happened this episode. They basically went around, did some errands, you know, each do off doing their own thing. Uh, maybe we learned a little bit more about how how Tak views, you know, his father's death and, and whatnot. Um, it's interesting to think that he actually thinks people hate the Asahinas because of the tragedy, right? And to me, that just makes no sense at all. Like, I, I get what they were saying, right? It's because uh, Asahina was this, this grand maestro, right, who was killed by the D2s. And because of that, the, the grand commander, the grand maestro of the Symphonica, uh, that, that Sagan dude, right, who we see at the very end of this episode, he was the one who, who declared that, okay, music should be banned from now on because of the D2 threat. But I don't see how anybody could actually shift the blame onto the Asahinas for, for that kind of thing, right? That makes no sense at all. If anything, maybe people would be a little bit upset by Sagan, upset by the Symphonica, but, you know, desperate times calls for desperate measures, I suppose. Um, yeah, and in any case... Yeah, I, I don't really see how anybody would have hated the Asahina, so maybe it's all just, you know, some some sort of complex that Tak has within himself. Uh, maybe that's also why he he's acting in, in much more of a secluded way, if you will. Um, but, no, uh, in any case, he's continuing on his journeys, um, getting more confidence as both a player, and who knows, maybe, if anything, if we, since we see the, the blank sheet music at the end of the episode, maybe he's going to be composing some music as well, uh, potentially the grand finale of this, 
anime, right? Where he plays a piece、um, which will synchronize with Cosette slash Destiny or whatnot, and defeat their great enemy or something of that sort.、Um, because that's just how a lot of these kinds of series typically go, right? But we'll get to that when we when we get there. Now,、um, that second dude that we saw at the very end,、um, he's obviously the grand. I think they call it the grand maestro, right? Of the Symphonica, he's the head honcho of of everything that's happening up to this far, up to this point.、Um, you know, theoretically, technically, they're also the ones who、uh, hold the music art technology, create music arts, and they're the、uh, supposed first line of defense against the D twos, right? Now. I don't think that they are a bad organization. I actually think,、um, all things considered,、uh, you know, up to what we've learned up to this point and whatnot, I actually do think they're they're doing the right thing.、Um, and and Sagan probably does have a a you know a noble goal in mind, right? Now, could it be somewhat twisted, right? Like for instance, his his little dialogue at the very end there definitely gives this kind of vibe where you know maybe he wants to to promote. Like if I'm gonna take something a little bit more from Evangelion or something, like promote the, the advancement of of humanity、uh, through through this combination of music, music arts, and D twos and and whatnot, right? Could it be that type of situation? I don't really know, but still, up to this point though, I do have to think that Savonicas are actually a force for good.、Um, Well, they are defeating the evil D twos after all,、um, which supposedly should be evil. Like, I I get that there could be some kind of twist in the future that says, oh, maybe the D twos aren't all that evil. Maybe they represent,、um, I don't know. Maybe they represent the 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 twistedness of humanity, or maybe they're they're music arts, but just from a different perspective, or or something something of that sort, right? It's it's happened before, and it could happen again. It could happen in this series as well. But at least up to this point, I don't particularly think that、um, the Smilnikas are all bad, and I do think that Sagan probably just took took care of the situation when nobody else could at the time, right? So if it does turn out to be that the Smilnika is a a you know more of an antagonist organization or what, I'm sure we'll we'll see more about that once we get to the end of this season, I presume. But at this point, though, I'm still holding my thoughts on that, and I would be saying. Maybe just the commander dude is a little bit more questionable, if you will. But definitely, the second that this second guy has some ulterior motives as well, including、um, getting close to Tuck. So we'll just have to see about that. They are gonna have to cross paths sooner or later. I mean, Tuck and and Anna and Destiny, they are traveling to New York after all, right? Which is, I do believe, the HQ of Symphonica. And not to mention, you know, they want to sort of sort out Destiny's situation, right? So. Sooner or later, they are gonna have to have cross paths with these Symphonicas once again because they're the only ones who know about this technology, right? And yeah, and that's basically it for this episode. I don't think there's really too much else to add here.、Um, yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's quite weird to me that they are really just going traveling from place to place without you know really too much of. Um, interconnectedness between. I mean, I guess technically they are still progressing the storyline. They do have to get to New York first before anything happens, right? But、um, I'm just like, for instance, this episode. Like, what really happened here in New Orleans that they can bring on to the next,、um, to the future, right? I guess maybe we see Talk gain a little bit more confidence in himself、uh, and whatnot.、Uh, we see. But that's basically it, right? Like, like Destiny's growth as her own character、um, and being more normal, not just the music art,、uh, but being more human as well. I feel like that that would be happening regardless of if we had this New Orleans stuff or whatnot, or 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 not. So yeah, it's just you don't really see a lot of like connectedness between the episodes right now, right? But hopefully that will happen starting from the second half of the season once they eventually get to New York.、Uh, now then again. From New Orleans to New York, that is still a long ways off, right? So, not really sure if we are going to be there in the next episode. I guess potentially they could still stop on the East Coast first, or or maybe somewhere, you know, somewhere. Actually, did they say did they say they were going to Chicago? I can't quite remember, but I think it would kind of make sense to also stop at Chicago, right? Even though it isn't technically like you know in terms of. In terms of like music relevance and whatnot, does Ch- actually no wait. Chicago has a symphony, doesn't it? I mean, I can't quite remember, but that、uh, no, it doesn't matter. We'll, the pro the story probably really really starts、uh, putting together into a continuous flow once we get to New York. So before that,、uh, I guess we'll just enjoy the ride. So thank you guys, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.